Space, the final frontier. An incomprehensible number of mysteries leading to an incomprehensible number of questions. As an astrophysicist, a question I get asked a lot, mainly by small children at outreach fairs that I'm working, is, do you think aliens exist? The kids will ask, do you think aliens exist? If they do, where are they? And why aren't they here? The first thing I do is clarify to the children that we're talking about space aliens and not illegal immigrants. You, um, you've got to be vigilant, there's a, a lot of racist kids out there. <laughs> Once I've clarified that, I'll explain that the first problem involved will be the sheer distances when we think about space. So, for example, there's a particle of light, a photon, leaving the sun right now, and it won't arrive here on Earth for another eight and a half minutes, which is roughly when this ordeal will be over, I think. <laughs> so what does this mean? This means that when we look out into space, we're looking out into the past. We're seeing things as they used to be. It's like visiting Sunderland. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm at work, I'll, I'll sit down and I'll, I'll look out in, into space and into the past. And I'll try and look back to a time when I was happy. <laughs> I haven't found it yet. Um, but I'm, I'll keep looking, I'll put a pin in that one actually. The, the objects that I study, they're much further away from the Earth than the Sun is. They're millions or billions of light years away. Which means the light leaving those objects right now won't arrive on Earth until the very, very distant future. Who knows what we'd have achieved in that time. We could have moved to different planets. We might have evolved into a different species. The UK might have even left the European Union. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Yes, I did just make a Brexit joke. And no, I'm not sorry. I'd do it again, to be honest. The fact is, there's been nothing else in the news for the last two years. I've had very little material to work with. Actually, speaking of the news, we'll come back to our aliens in a minute, but you're going to want to hear this. This is a true story, so strap yourselves in. As a scientist, one of the things we want to achieve is we want our work to be involved in what we call a press release. And that is where the press, news outlets, they pick up our work and they show it to the public so they can see what we've been working on. And my colleague, Jacob, was lucky enough to have that happen to him. Jacob works on planetary impacts specifically planetary impacts concerning the planet Uranus. <laughs> yeah, it's going there. And, um, <laughs> Jacob's work was picked up by loads of different news outlets. We're talking like CNN, The Telegraph, The Observer, The Guardian, New Scientist, and they all ran super professional headlines, okay? Really trying to avoid that obvious joke that I can see a lot of you have already beaten me to. The Metro, on the other hand, thought, fuck that. Okay, put your seatbelts on. They ran the headline, massive object smashes into Uranus, leaving it ruined forever. <laughs> Imagine being in that movie and like, guys, I've, I've got to go. You saw the science headline for tomorrow. No worries, boss, it's all sorted. I don't need to check it. No, no, you get yourself home. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I'm not lucky enough to get to go into work every morning and smash massive objects into Uranus, leaving a room for <laughs> I'm essentially a, uh, a glorified coder. And that brings me on to my, my second point about why we might not know about the existence of ET. What if the people with their eyes to the sky, the people who are, who are looking out into space, are entirely incompetent? People like me. <laughs> so what's your name, Sam? Sam. Sam, Sam. 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 can I let you into a secret Sam between me and you again? I've got no idea what I'm doing, Sam. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea, it's nice to hear, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I spent four hours this morning scrolling through my code only to find there was a fucking comma in the wrong place. I'm essentially paid to Google things. Okay? So if I have a problem at work, if I can't figure something out, I'll copy and paste it into Google and I'll see if someone who is better, more intelligent and more competent than my job than me has already solved that problem and posted it online for me to copy. And if they haven't, do I, do I try and solve the problem, Sam? Do I, try, do I try and solve I don't try and solve the problem. I wait. And I enter a war of attrition with the internet. A war of attrition that, more often than not, I win. So unlike existence for aliens being proven, there's definitely proven existence for a group of well-motivated, intelligent people out there, of which clearly I am not one. And the fact I have to be online a lot and, and using Google and these search engines, is, it poses a massive problem to me because I have a medical addiction it's quite serious, actually, to scrolling through BuzzFeed articles and list articles or listicles. And 
I spent two hours today reading articles and listicles, including, but not limited to, 10 tips on how to speak to children so you don't patronise them. How are we doing that, Sam? We? He's a good boy, isn't he? What a little trooper. Um, by mass, what percentage of Simon Cowell's face is now plastic? Um, if fascist dictators were drag artists, what would their queen name be? <laughs> The clear winner was Madame Hussein. <laughs> I mean, you're laughing, you're laughing, Sam, but I am government funded. <laughs> Which means that you guys, the beautiful British taxpayer, you pay for this. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm really sorry, I've, I've never paid tax. I've never paid tax. It's quite awful, actually, isn't it? Yeah, so I'll move on. Oh, yeah? Yeah, good, yeah, I'll move on. Well, good. Okay, we'll go back to our aliens. So, this brings me on to my third and final point as to why we might not know about the existence of aliens. These aliens might exist, they might know where we are, they might know what we're doing, and they might want fuck all to do with us. The first signal that we would have outputted into space that they would have been able to receive was transmitted by none other than the Nazi party. And call me old fashioned, but I don't think that portrays our species in, in the most positive <laughs> of life. I would like to say things have improved, but if anything, things have gotten way, way worse. Love Island has just been renewed, renewed for a winter and a summer season, and we are still broadcasting Celebrity Big Brother. What is ET going to think when it receives CBB 2020? It's Dear 15 in the CBB house, and Prince Andrew has been called to the diary room. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Okay, so let's, let's imagine these aliens, that they're flying through the Milky Way, they're flying through our solar system, they're on the way to Saturn's cinema world to see John Wick 15, the re -wickening. <laughs> They fly past Earth, and just like you'd do, just like you'd do, Sam, if you were driving down a country lane in the middle of the night and you saw a lone house with its lights on, they slow down and they're peering through the windows, and inside they see us, the human race, a bunch of weird-looking primates who are killing each other over who we think built the house, <laughs> and we're arguing and fighting over which room in the house we're originally from, the whole time this is going on, there are a select few occupants of the house that have taken over the control of the top two air-conditioned floors of the house, and they set the rest of the fucking house on fire. <laughs> and they, right, get this, they're denying that that fire even exists. <laughs> and they've actually managed to convince half of the people who live in the cramped bottom two floors of the house that that fire is a myth. Even though those people are in fact themselves on fire. <laughs> I mean, would, would you stop at that house, sir? Would you stop at that house? The answer is no, you fucking wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't stop at that house. Maybe, maybe we are just too terrible for anybody to want to knock on our door. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> I mean, hindsight is a, like a really powerful thing. And, and, and I know now that I really should not have said all of that to the eight-year-old girl who asked me about it. <laughs> at the outreach fair. But, but in my defence, the BuzzFeed listicle I was reading about how to speak to kids without patronising told me to be direct and honest at all times. So. <laughs> Thank you.